catfish, sheep's head, pompano, bluefish, whiting. Bite is so good. All, all the rods are going off. Look. People say you don't catch fish in the rain. Look, right through fish. Catfish, sheep's head, pompano, bluefish, whitings. Look at that. Nice big one. You gotta cook this on the fire side. not to do when you're in the pier. You get excited over a seal That's cat. A blooper. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh man, this was a big one. It's a really nice catfish. So I took him home. Time to go clean him up. Look at that how nice he is. So I'm gonna get my seasoning ready. So now I got my culantro, garlic, pepper, some broadleaf thyme, some regular thyme, some scallions. And I'm going to blend this up and that's what I'm going to use to season up my fish. I'm going to season this overnight and that's the big catfish. So here's how I clean this up. First you got to take the beakers off the skin, scrape it well, wash it out. Let's cut out all the whiskers, the little fins. Yeah, up on top of the side. I'm going to score it about, you know, an inch, inch and a quarter. I'm going to use a nice chopper or cleaver and score it real fast and hard. This way it cuts right through. Look at that, clean cuts. You know we love this little jelly fin too. I'm throwing it by the back because in case I was checking for eggs, it didn't have any. Breaking on a catfish, a lot of people feel that it's hard, you know. I just want to show how easy it is and how you can save as much meat as possible. Very, very simple. Just work in small pieces. As you can see how I did this one here. Coming around to the head, a lot of people just throw all this away. And this is usually where a lot of meat is. You just gotta take your time. You know, we don't like to throw away the head because there's a lot of meat, the juice in the head that we love. It's always been a delicacy in the Caribbean and Guyana where I'm from. It's so easy to cut and get the gills out. Some people usually cook the gill, but I didn't cook the gill. I'm just going to cut this back up into two more pieces and we're done. See, that's a gill. And this little side piece here, it's got a lot of meat, so we don't throw that away too. Catfish is a simple fish to prepare. I'm setting all this up today, tonight, put it in the fridge. I'm cooking a nice fish curry with some green mango and some saijan. Saijan is also called moringa. 
So I got some fresh ones in the yard. Let me finish up here now. See, this is the side, the side meat. Very nice. And this piece, I'm just going to cut it out. Yeah, right there. You gotta go wash and clean this up with some lime and vinegar. Then I'm gonna drop some nice seasoning on him. And wait till you see this recipe tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna put some salt. Just enough to coat, and then I got some black pepper. And then I'm gonna add my seasoning mix that I just did earlier. So I'm gonna mix this up really well, and I'll put it aside in the fridge until tomorrow. So that's my seasoned fish from yesterday. I got some green mangoes, some moringa. I cut up my onion, garlic, and some ginger on the right here. I got my curry mix, which is curry powder, garam masala, jeera, and some turmeric. Of course, I got fresh peppers from the garden, some tomato, some cut up scallions, and some thyme. That's cilantro. So let's start with the onion and garlic and the ginger paste with some oil. I let this saute really nice. And you're looking for a caramelized flavor, caramelized color. I let it soften and get really nice. Brings out more flavor to the food. That's 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 my opinion. This is how I cook my fish curry. And that's my mix. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this. I want it to be like a like a paste kind of texture. I don't like to put too much water because I want my masala to fry really well in the pot. Mix it up really well and then add it directly to the onion and the garlic paste. It's good to turn the heat down a little bit when, when you're going to cover this to let it cook. I like my masala not burnt but fried properly before I add any meat. I like to cook my curry slow and low. And also, I don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pot. And if that is the case, you can add a little bit of oil to the masala mix itself. I'm just going to cover this and let it simmer. Looking good, looking good. See, it looks like it's catching on the pot. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to the side. You don't have to add a lot of water, just a little bit. Stir it up. We cover this back down and let it cook another 5-10 minutes before we get the fish and stuff. But before all that, you'll see what I'll do next. This is how I do my curry. I add my fresh tomato. Mix it in well. And there are my peppers. So all my peppers are left whole. Because I like to take this out and eat it in my plate separate. It has lots of flavor. Might burst one or two at the end of the fish. At the end of the curry, but for now I'm leaving it whole. I'm gonna cover this, leave it alone for five minutes or so. Mm hmm. Now we're talking. That's it. So as you notice, I'm putting the pepper on the side. That's because I'm about to add the fish, and also my green mangoes and the uh, moringa are side to my pot. So first, let's place the fish inside. See, season up really nice. The head, I'm trying to put the thicker parts in the middle of the pot because that's where more the heat is. This is a side gen of Moringa. My tree has very young ones, so the seed itself is not developed. And this is the green mangoes. Cover this, let the masala and the fish and everything mix up really well on one side. Then I'm gonna flip it over. Get it nice and coated with the masala and the curry mix. So remember I seasoned the fish before, so now I'm seasoning the mango and the moringa. Then when I'm going to add the water, I'm going to season it with salt again. So I like to season every layer of cooking. This way my food is not short of salt or I don't have to add a whole bunch of salt at one time. Taste as you go. Just want to make sure nothing is burning or catching at the bottom. Here's the side jam. Man, this is a delicacy. 
tastes so good. And green mangoes, of course. What I could have added some okros, some nice young okros, but totally forgot. Totally forgot to add the okros. Nice. Catfish is a nice fish. Lots of people consider it a trash fish in Florida. But I will invite anyone to my home to taste this. So I'm going to add the water. If you notice, I'm putting it only at one spot. and let it spread throughout the pot. And this was the um, scallion and the cilantro on top. It's just going to give another level of flavor. And here's what I was talking about with the salt. Seasoning every level of the food. Cover this, let it simmer. I'm just going to check on it to make sure it's not catching on the bottom. And this is almost done. Yep, I'm going to flip it again, just once more. Make sure everything is good. And that's it, guys. Look at that. Here's the head. You know, this is a delicacy, we don't throw these away. Man, it's smelling really nice. Wish you guys were here, and we're gonna have this with some rice today. You can have this with roti, or bread, or you want it to just so, go right ahead. And there's a the size. This is a delicious, delicious food today. Look at that delicious catfish. Nice and juicy. I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy my lunch. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and come enjoy some delicious food with me. And here's the veggies we picked for the food. Saijan and the peppers and the broadleaf thyme. And here's the peppers, pimento, weary pepper and some broadleaf thyme right here. This is all going right into the pot. Fresh from the garden. Mm-mm. Just a few of this is fine for the pot. Oh, wow. And once again, guys, thanks for watching. And here are a few more videos.